this Swiss admit was processed, uh, as was uh, information from this admit was was processed using our uh, software, which we designed for click reaction. So we put this Swiss admit uh, module for the in the click reaction to analyze all these descriptors and uh, most most importantly we analyzed the drug likeness for our uh, in silica synthesized substances those of you who is interested in a, in a kind of a high throughput screening and a, and the synthetic pathways could also use our software to synthesize the drug, the, the drug-like molecules, and to compare them with the with the drugs of interest, as shown shown here, uh, to improve the uh, uh, all these properties uh, and uh, use them as a filters. the The pipeline would be if you have the the drug the drug of interest which is uh, also clickable, uh, you could use as a scaffold, then we would calculate all these parameters and then try to uh, synthesize, synthesize the similar substances uh, to improve the, all, this, all these parameters, all these kinetics, and come up with the, with the better the medication. And you, know, you could uh, write a script to process all this information in terms of the drug likeness or medicinal chemistry or pharmacokinetics, the solubility. Then you could uh, do some, some experiments like formulation or modification of this substance to improve the solubility. Uh, you could also improve the parameters like we. Uh, did in our software design to improve the blood brain barrier permeation. So, as you can see here, so this substance would permeate, and uh, if the substance is not permeating, like some molecules, uh, like ivermectin, we have this antiparasitic substance. We wanted to treat the the new uh, neuroblastoma uh, in, in the children. And we tried to uh, Im implement this drug, but this is not true. This was the failure because the drug didn't really permeate the, the blood brain barrier. And this was the this was the, the due to the high, probably higher, very, very high lipophilicity of this drug. We could also use the medicinal chemistry. Uh, parameters like pains, uh, pains brand parameters to uh, to see whether we have the some alerts on the on the on the, on the, on the substance. So the pain is the uh, the pain assay interference compounds are the chemical compounds that often. Uh, give the false positive results in the high throughput screen. So it's like you have uh, some specific interaction of the substance with some proteins. You have protein A, B, and C, and you get a no specific interaction. Then you would try to uh, screen uh, screen the substances to, in order to find the false positive results in the high and higher throughput screen. And if you will have a positive result, then you would have some alerts here. And uh, mm, uh, the same is for Brank mm, pan assay interface clone. It's, uh, it's similar to pan assay interference compounds. Then if you have some alerts, then you would probably optimize the, uh, optimize your substance to have uh, no violation here. The common pains uh, uh, substances include toxaflavine, isotiazolines, curcumin, uh, enones, 
quinones, catechol. So those of you who who is going to work with, with the substances should be also very careful because they are usually common pains. So they, they will give you some, some, some alerts and which, which, mean, which means that they have the unspecific, non-specific interaction with, with this particular, particular proteins. Although if they're non-specific, then uh, the specificity would be neglected uh, for, in this essay. And in terms of the, if the specificity is neglected, then the substances would, not, would, would be no use in terms of the in terms of the inhibition of precise receptors we want to inhibit. Also the drug likeness, uh, the drug likeness is the is the very important parameter. And you have a one violation which is the molecular weight and the molecular weight is uh, less than 250 Dalton. So the that means you will have the violation. Also, the synthetic accessibility. You can also access the synthetic accessibility. And some, it's also a very important parameter when you will run the, the neural click, you would have a, some kind of a, a synthetic pathways and you would probably try to establish the synthetic accessibility by matching the click reaction with the model uh, with the with the uh, modeling of the synthetic accessibility derived from the Swiss Adma uh, pipeline. So it would be also very interesting to, to look at the at this particular uh, descriptor because uh, uh, one could also uh, figure it out how this actually correlates with our uh, synthetic database and whether there is some correlation. So what are the synthetic accessibilities in terms of the feasibility, probably the yield? Some could also try to understand the, this, these parameters. So this is also the, uh, the example of the chemical data. Uh, like Dill's Adler reaction here, and in this reaction you have DNs and DNA files, and you would simply uh, create the the circle the, to produce the to produce the, uh, the 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 product of this reaction. So, and the chem therefore the chemical data should be uh, specific, uh, very special, and uh, chemical names are also important, but sometimes they're not really very convenient because you have uh, uh, a lot of uh, chemical names like brand names also. The, the, the name, uh, the, 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 com the companies, the names the companies are using in, as you can see here, we have a lot of uh, kind of uh, generic names for this particular drug. And uh, you have, uh, you have the, the, standard, the standard name, isobutylphenyl propionic acid, if we are talking about the, the, the standard, uh, the standard UPAC name for, for this particular substance and uh, as for the generic names you have different names like uh, which were uh, which are highly used by the comp different companies producing this particular substance so sometimes it's not very convenient because you have too much too many generic names to for, for the, just for the same structure especially in the pharmacology Sometimes, especially for antibiotics, you get a lot of uh, generic names due to uh, due to generics because they are they are actually lacking the, the, the patented rights. So every company would probably move, 
modify the formulation and would give the this product the, their own name. So sometimes you have like 50 or even more uh, different generic names. Atoms connected by bonds can be also thought as a as a group of objects uh, that are connected together in a particular a particular way. So like what's shown here, you have the atoms which are numbered and you have bonds and uh, uh, which is also helpful to analyze, especially when you have smart uh, strings, then it's also the, this information is available in smart strings. And how you actually, you can handle the, the chemical data. So here's just a funny picture when you, uh, this is the collective, 10th collective index of chemical abstracts, consists of 75 volumes and weights with weight of more than, more than 150 kilograms. It contains uh, 24 million entries. So now uh, with the, with, with, uh, with help of the chemoinformatics and, uh, and uh, computers, we would, uh, conf we would we can convert it to the uh, to the databases, different databases, and uh, these databases are usually uh, storing the data as a, as a two D. Substances are 3D substances. They sometimes also contain, most of the time, they also contain the substances as a 1D information, as a string like smiles. So, very efficient and uh, uh, the, probably the, the best way to go through all this information using the high throughput, different high throughput techniques and filters. We could, uh, using these databases and handling the chemical data, we could search the structures, uh, different parts of the molecules, the substructures, similar structures. We could process them in a 1D, 2D, or 3D. Uh, sometimes would also, it is also possible to search for the chemical reaction like we did with the, with the click reaction. And, uh, in the, when you would have a, a practical courses, you would probably uh, analyze the, the click reaction, trying to improve it, uh, trying to optimize the, the click reaction to be more like biologically, uh, biologically uh, suitable, like orthog more orthogonal, let's say, but bi orthogonal click reaction and. Uh, it does, this might be also very promising to to use this this reaction in the, in the biological system. You could also do the various conversions, and there are some some software uh, protocols like Open Bubble, uh, Open Bubble Converter. Then uh, you could very easily convert from one. A chemical format to the other and vice versa one from one format to the other and vice versa uh, so as i already mentioned you would most likely uh, try to organize in a, uh, all your chemical data as a, as a chemical database and the chemical database is a database specifically designed to store the chemical information and this information mostly uh, contains the crystal structure, spectra, reaction, synthesis, uh, thermophysical data. For this reason, you have uh, various uh, types of uh, biological uh, databases. Uh, and as I already mentioned, like, like this, you can actually convert convert uh, uh, different uh, different formats you have here so you got uh, you got the open bubble uh, algorithm for the for this conversion sometimes it's not very efficient 
would sometimes create a lot of uh, mistakes and violations like if you have uh, uh, if you have a phenol ring, sometimes the aromatic aromatic rings are not very well very well processed because you have different representations of the aromatic ring. You have like unsaturated representation or, or you have calculated representations and uh, different algorithms are not really very well uh, des designed very well to uh, to understand this these different formats in the, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the molecule so therefore usually the this conversion is is very tricky to uh, to achieve therefore uh, sometimes you would have uh, mistakes in this conversion and you have to do the the manual creation of your uh, converted database if it's not that big so as you can see uh, using the um, windows or the the Linux system, you got this open bubble uh, protocol, which will, uh, which is the command line uh, software. You could also integrate it in, into the Python, and you can use the Python to convert your molecules. So here, there's a different uh, different formats. Uh, most most of them are suitable for the particular. Uh, quantum mechanics, uh, quantum mechanics uh, uh, pipelines uh, like CASTEP format. It's, uh, you also have some uh, CAR substance, CAR formats. The CAR is, is very widely used for uh, the, the, the DFT uh, software uh, protocols. And uh, also very, very, um, very convertible. You can actually convert it. You also have a canonical smiles, isomeric smiles. So here you can easily convert it to the smiles as well. And here we're just missing some uh, converted uh, formats like PDB or MO2 and the SDF but uh, they are also uh, integrated in the open bubble software then you can also easily convert it to this particular formats so this open bubble is a is an open source you can just go to the website and download it i would recommend using uh, linux to uh, to download the software you also have uh, typical information in molecular structure. Usually, uh, it, uh, it, the information about the whole molecule contains the name, the journal uh, article for the crystal structure, especially when you're dealing with the PDB. If you want to uh, process the PDB file, you get like the head, the head information. In this head information, you got usually the information on how this uh, molecule was uh, was produced, and the office, the information on the, each atom uh, with some atom names, amino acids. So they are uh, they are atom names within the amino acid residue, and are usually specified like that. Or you also have a Cartesian coordinates or the Z matrix, Z matrix, atom number, atom charges, formal or partial charges. They also have the residues, sometimes the chain information about the chain and uh, the temperature. Sometimes you have a temperature five factor, especially in again in the PDB file, PDB files, occupancy for the crystal structures. Mm. The, the bonding information sometimes uh, also added to the system. Uh, usually, this information is not included in a standard uh, structural file. Sometimes 
the information about the bone orders is also important, but it's not always stored uh, in the PDB. And the PDB, you have, on the other hand, if you have the, the PDBs, uh, PDB complex, usually the, the structure of the ligand is also added, appended to the, uh, to the PDB uh, to file as a, as a, as a ligand. And usually it contains the, the number of the, the, the atoms like that. And then you, uh, in the PDB, the, it's specified by the, the, the sometimes the chain, the, the, the additional chain is added, or yeah, one could also ignore this information. So, uh, what kind of databases you have, then you could uh, get all this information uh, from the internet. There are some bioactivity databases, which will, would give you the, uh, the, the, the possibility to correlate the structures or other chemical information to the bioactivity results taken from the bioassays in the literature, uh, patents and the screening programs. Uh, some of this uh, data, uh, databases are ScrubChem database, PubChem bioassay, and uh, Chem EMBL into the database, Chem, ChemBL database, EMBL, e EBI from the MBL EBI developers. And um, in the NCBI and, and in the NCBI database, you would also have the, mm, the, the bio, bioactivity information sometimes. In a, it's also also possible to get the information from the PDB, but it's uh, not very easy. Uh, sometimes you, if, uh, if you are looking at the crystal structure, there might be information about the, also the, the biological activity of this protein uh, together with, together with uh, IC50 or the emission constant, but it's not, it's not very typical. So what's the, the PDB uh, file? file format. The PDB is a protein data bank, uh, which was developed by the Brookhaven National Laboratory. And this is the primary uh, storing format for the crystal, protein crystal structure. So uh, almost uh, more than 90% of the all these uh, proteins are stored uh, stored using the PDB uh, PDB format file format, so it's widely used, uh, especially in a, in a uh, computational synthetic biology when you would have the, mm, the analysis of the proteins, the mutations, and I would. Uh, give the introduction on the on the projects we have and what kind of uh, uh, what kind of um, modifications you can uh, introduce to this uh, PDB file to to analyze different property protein properties and uh, uh, some some protein modifications. So it's widely used for molecular modeling programs and the PDB file, PDB file has the, some limitations, like columns are of the fixed side, they have the fixed size columns. And this file does not contain the information about the bond order. So uh, this is just, uh, these are just uh, na the names of the of the residues, the atoms, and the Cartesian coordinates, coordinates and the partial uh, 
uh, partial charges, the, pro, the, the atomic partial charges are added sometimes. And uh, sometimes you could also have the information about the uh, temperature factor, temperature parameter, a parameter which was uh, uh, done by done by by the experiment, and uh, sometimes it's uh, important to investigate the the protein flexibility. It's called the B factor, and in the crystallography, this B factor is uh, is is important to to calculate or to assess the uncertainty in the positions of atoms increased with disorder in the protein crystal. And as I already mentioned, this was uh, this was done in the experiment. You just have to make sure that if you have this information, then sometimes it's important to compare it to the uh, molecular dynamics data. Uh, usually the, para the, the temperature factor is less than uh, 30 angstrom and it signifies the confidence in, in the atomic positions while the temperature uh, value if, is of greater than 60 angstrom signifies the disorder. So kind of between uh, between 30 and 60, you would probably uh, think that your protein is more or less suitable. Of course, if this is less than 30, the, the, the protein is a kind of has a very high confidence. And if it's greater than 60, then the protein is very disordered and uh, it's not very good for the modeling. And this information uh, is encoded in the in the PDB files, last numeric as a last numeric value. Uh, and uh, when you see the, the 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 names like atom and heter atom records, and uh, this uh, this B factor can be colored by uh, in the in the representations and uh, to visualize the flexibility of the protein. So as I already mentioned, it's very important. You could also use this information if it's still available, and uh, especially when the when you have the the NMR models and the, the uncertainties in the NMR models, the particular uh, particularly important to analyze. So this is uh, this is about the the PDB. You have to make sure that the PDB is also uh, the PDB file is uh, uh, is valid in terms of the for the for the modeling in terms of the. Uh, in terms of the high resolution, usually the resolution is about two, three angstrom uh, or less considered relatively good. If you have a very high resolution, that means that uh, the structure is not really suitable uh, for the molecular modeling and you have to uh, implement some techniques to increase the to improve this parameter at some point, either using some, some homology modeling of your protein or some other, some other artificial, artificial algorithms to improve this parameter. Like more probity, in the more probity, there is also the, the more probity protocol has the, the pipeline how to improve this, all these distorted, distorted proteins and uh, one could also use it to improve this uh, information. And uh, the, the data bank has also developed new formats to replace the PDB, like MMC format, 
uh, micromolecular crystallographic information files, but so far it's, they're not really very, uh, very common, this, this, this format. So uh, the, the software is still not really adapting. Most of the software is not really adapting this, this format, and the PDB is the, the most important one, which was not really substituted by the newer formats. So what is the what is the what are the other formats? Mm, the other formats are uh, ST file formats uh, developed by Molecular Design Limited, the commercial the commercial company, and it can store the the two D and three D structures and uh, usually very well adapted for the small molecule. So I think we can have a break and then rooms and uh, bond types. Uh, uh, for example, as shown here, you get information about the atoms, when you have information about the bonds, when you also have the smiles and uh, chemical uh, chemical information, the chemical name of the data, and Isis internal number, and um, there are also some parameters, additional parameters like the information where the where this file was uh, downloaded from. Sometimes it's also included as a, as a, as a head information and. Uh, this data. Where do you see on this data? And this information can store additional. This this file can store additional information such as biological activity associated with the molecule. So, mm, quite helpful uh, data format. Uh, most of the uh, commercial uh, open source software can also process this information, process this file, like a VMD, uh, like Moya, Maestro, Molesoft, and Spymo, you could also process this information. Avogadro, so whatever software you, you are using, it's also possible to process uh, this information. So uh, what are the chemical line notations? The chemical line notations usually, it's a representations of molecules, molecules that fit on a single, single line. Uh, for example, standard structural formula like uh, the water formula here and this work uh, this works well with linear compounds but uh, when you have uh, the rings and the complex substructure it's not really working very well so most of the time these chemical line notations they are not really very useful and the line notations can be compact and generally uh, human readable and understandable. This is some, but sometimes this is not really very easy to understand due to just uh, information about the, the stoichiometry, but how, what, how this to, uh, topology of the file is assembled is very hard to, to, to determine. Uh, there are also different many lines notations like like this substance, uh, dimethylamino, phenylamino, and naphthalene, sulfonic acid. So you can represent it through a different you know, line notations that are like you know, vice versa line notations, which is early notation and what is not really used nowadays, but 
in some databases, it can be also found. Uh, raw style notation we have. Uh, the most uh, common notation is smiles, when you got uh, the kind of a string of uh, molecules, um, of strings of, of different molecules, and it's very easy to, to process. And here you have the information on the atoms, and uh, and also it's possible to to put the, mm, the topology of the molecule. But sometimes uh, it's really hard to uh, discriminate uh, the, the molecules due to uh, very similar uh, smiles representations. This was uh, developed by day Benning and daylight chemical systems. Therefore, uh, this data is kind of derived from the commercial entities and you get a lot of commercial protocols adopting this format. You also have a Sibyl line notation from Tripos, uh, which is very powerful uh, software. You get the Sibyl, the Sibyl software, chemoinformatics, bioinformatics software, which is discontinued, which was discontinued. It's a very unique software, but due to some financial uh, difficulties it was discontinued and uh, we still have this file, uh, file SLN uh, format file which was also widely which is also widely used in uh, chemoinformatics. You also have in chi in chi representation of the molecules which was developed by UPAC. One could also use this kind of keys to process the, uh, the, the chemical data. So actually you have a lot of choices how to process the molecules using different line, line notations. And SMILES, are, as I already, uh, already mentioned, is the most widely used and most useful chemical line notation. It can be used as, a, as an input and output data, uh, chemical data for, uh, for many programs. Uh, in our uh, chemical software design, we are also using it for, to, to, to program the, for the reactions, different reactions, not just click reactions, we also program as did. Uh, as uh, these other reactions and some other reactions, so it's not very limited to just one reaction. One could also uh, use the, to program bioorthogonal reactions and many things. So uh, it can be used uh, as a, as input output uh, data. Simple smile string resembles standard chemical nomenclature. The data atoms uh, it's commonly found in organic molecules. Usually, the smiles uh, strings are mm, widely adapted for the organic molecules, and not really very useful for inorganic molecules. It's, mm, it's not really. It's not really very, uh, very. Mm, very useful uh, uh, string representation for to, for instance, to describe the the, the crystal, the inorganic crystal structure. And but uh, when you have uh, drug-like molecules, it, it is probably the best way to perform the high throughput screening due to simplicity of this file format. Uh, single bonds are implied between each atom and hydrogen. Atoms are usually omitted, but can, can also be included in square brackets uh, for the purpose of uh, um, for the purpose of uh, speed and uh, efficacy. 
we are usually neglecting this. Uh, we are meeting this hydrogen atoms and the, the software, uh, the software usually the, the commercial software also not including this information in the algorithms. For instance, some examples of smiles, you have ethanol, acetic acid, cyclohexane, pyridine, sodium chloride, sodium chloride is present as, a, as, an, as an ion here. And uh, usually uh, when you have ions here, the, the, again, the, the software is not really very well tolerates the, the ion representation using smiles. But for mm, relatively simple molecules, like shown here, it's an ideal format to calculate various descriptors associated with these structures. Uh, if you are going to use the Python, then I would suggest to use RDKit uh, software, which is the main uh, source by chemoinformatics source uh, available uh, on the internet. And it's, it's an open source. It's developed by Greg Landron uh, with num numerous additional contributions contributions to the RD kit as an open source. And we are also trying to contribute to the software by um, creating some modules. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, one of these modules. I'm going to talk about it like uh, like, like the one who is giving you the, the information on the structure, on the symmetry of the, of the ligand. And we are using the Voronoi algorithm to describe, uh, to describe and analyze this structure. The RD kit is, uh, is a kind of uh, API, application programming, programming interface is written in, in, in Python, Java, C++. Uh, and so far, uh, so far has a uh, 2023, I think the version is 2023, and um, is, is, has a very, very, very good maintenance. Uh, and uh, you could, uh, update this package and with a lot of new uh, functions and uh, bug fixed. So uh, the, the environment is, is mostly um, leveraged by the, the Conda binary environments when you can just download and install Conda environment and through uh, mini Conda or Anaconda uh, module you can you can simply install this this package and uh, just starting to process your molecules our program neuroclick is also written in, in python using the rd kit as a main protocol so those of you who is interested to improve our mm, source code is also welcome to participate in our activities. On the other hand, there are some other programs then you can just simply uh, draw the molecule here and produce the smiles from the, from the graphs and then just copy paste the information to your software. It's called the uh, KimDraw Ultra from, uh, from I think from the UK and uh, it's, it's also widely used just to to represent different molecules from the Cambridge think university and uh, you could uh, also modify the the, the soft the, the, the graph here and uh, automatically you have a modification of your smiles. On the other hand, uh, you also have a similar snaplets like uh, 
like present here, uh, free of charge because this is the commercial software, but we have a license for this. So those of you who wants to use this the software could contact our uh, assistant and they will give you the, the key, the, 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 the license to download the software as well. And you can use similar representations. You can just draw the molecule and generate the smiles from uh, directly from the servers, uh, such as Swiss Admir, More Inspiration, and, uh, and others. So this would be also quite helpful. And um, uh, you could uh, use the, the smiles for uh, different, uh, different projects to, to, as I already mentioned, to do the substructure search, informational analysis, descriptor analysis, similarity, uh, and, and so on. So what kind of uh, list of uh, uh, chemical, chemical databases you have and uh, 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 what are the, the for, for the web-like databases you can use the smiles are zinc, uh, zinc, zinc database. You also have the the binding DP, which is called binding database. And some databases are also available online, including the uh, commercial, commercial substances in silica, which is called the database, which is called Alinda database. Uh, I also kind of, uh, quite fascinated by this uh, by this Alinda database because we have a chance to to order different drug like molecules uh, which is which are produced in Russia so those of you who wants to order the software the, the substances could use some kind of a, uh, databases like Alinda because it's a bit problematic if you would just screen the zinc database and uh, when you get the, the right structures, you, you would have a difficulty to order the, subs, the substances. And right now, they have more like 10 million different substances, and you could just simply perform the, the high throughput screening using all these compounds. And then, once you have the right structure, you can just download, just order it. Okay. So here the, the, there are the strings, smile strings, and here are the compounds. And uh, you could also use the branches, parentheses, the branches, the brackets are used for, to represent the, the ions, and the, the, and the branches are represented by enclosed side chains in the parentheses, like here, for the acetic acid. So to, to describe the topology. Also, the rings are specified by using the, the numbers to create the ring enclosure, enclosures. So when you would like to uh, draw the molecule like cyclohexane, then you have to specify the, uh, the end, the, in, the, in the beginning and the end of the molecule to ensure the uh, the, the ring enclosures and the lower uh, case characters are used to specify aromatic rings like this and kind of very helpful to 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 read through the smile smile because like we have, we have it like this here we will specify enclosures and you could also specify the the atoms, the, the carbon atom, the nitrogen atom, where the, they are going to create the bond. You have here the information on the 
aromatic rings, and if this is the lower case uh, letter, then you would have the information and aromaticity of the malic, like benzene. Um, is more is more specified by by this smiles representations or floral, but you could actually you could actually specify the the atom using different smiles smile strings. Smiles could also have additional notations. They could contain additional features that which can be used to describe chirality, double bond, isomers, and metal complexes. You could find more information on the, uh, just accessing the, the, com the commercial company, the daylight company, and all this information concerning the smiles and some modification of the smiles can be found by using this link. What are the benefits of uh, the SMILES representation? The SMILES are essentially, uh, are essentially used as a, as a language with the simple letters, bond and, bonds and rules. They are extremely compact <clears throat> and use little, the, only the very small storage is required to uh, process to use uh, to store and process uh, very huge um, information, chemical information. But um, you can also write the, the ethanol in different ways, like that, uh, from right to left and to left and right, and is the system understands it, understands it as an ethanol molecule. But sometimes it's also a, a, a limitation because it lacks the uh, kind of uh, uniqueness of the molecule. So uh, you are losing the, uh, the the ability to 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 process uh, the smiles in a kind of a, in a specific way. Because if you would have different uh, different writing, uh, smiling, uh, write, writing formats, writing smiles format, then uh, sometimes the system would be less efficient because uh, you are just repeating the, you are just repeating the screening or you are repeating the experiments and sometimes the, the system gets confused, you get also the, the error and uh, this would also decrease the efficacy of your model. And the search information is less effective because when you will specify it in a, in a different way, you will get the same result. So the, the smiles uh, are not very specific in terms of the, uh, the kind of uniqueness of the structure. So what kind of chemical databases you also have uh, to process all these formats? Uh, the chemical databases are important in all stages of medicinal chemistry, chemoinformatics, synthetic biology. In, a, in the chemical databases, we have the, the, date, the chemical data, reactions and synthetic data, for example, like Malstein, chemical abstracts, uh, Merck indexes from the Merck company, pharmaceutical company, uh, Chem uh, Reg, Reg Mo, Enzambo, so the list of uh, chemical registration system, systems that you can also access to find uh, different chemical data like this. Sci Finder, then you could access the products and download them. There are 89 million of substances and 39 million of patents and journal articles that can be also processed to search for the uh, different uh, chemical substances or the chemical data.
uh, the compound structures and uh, synthesis information can be also found uh, by parsing through all these uh, uh, chemical databases. And the biological data, such as in-house testing data, MLR data, can be also accessed uh, using these databases, like MDDR. So this is just an example of the uh, PDB file again. Uh, I want to specify it here. So what we have, we have the amino acids, aspartic, this and that. We have the element and we have the element position within the amino acid, which is specified by the, the codes here. So this is the information that this is the number. I know the hetero atom. The hetero atom is usually for the ligand molecule. And it's appended at the end of this file. Here we have the Cartesian coordinates and the sequence number for the chain name also uh, introduced to this file. So, and sometimes we also have the partial charges here and the B factors that you could also use. So what kind of uh, uh, information we have? We have the uh, where we can use this PDB files. We can use them for proteins, uh, for proteins or oligosaccharides, uh, nucleic acids, uh, and so far we have uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, different uh, uh, different st biological structures. Like like in total, we have close to 200,000 X-ray structures to 100, 150,000 of NMR and also electron microscopy structures in the PDB, for, PDB data bank, which is uh, close to 12,000 uh, molecules uh, using up to 200 different techniques. Usually, most of them is a kind of X-ray X-ray data, but you also have the electron microscopy and the mass and modification, neutron scattering, neutron scattering techniques. So in total, you have about uh, two hundred thousand of uh, chemical data uh, entities of chemical data that you can access from this PDB. And here's the representation of the, and the visualization of this chemical data. If you can, can use the, the PDB server, you can create a similar uh, picture using Python, Pymo, Pymo, Pymo visualizing software. As you can see, you can you can analyze the kind of polymers like proteins, like uh, fibrillar polymer, globular polymer proteins, very complex, containing various uh, subunits here, and also the ligand co-crystallized. I assume these are the co-crystallized ligands, and here's the DNA or RNA molecule here which can also be visualized by using the PDB. The other, uh, the other software, the other, the other database is the Zinc database, which collects together the commercially available uh, substances. You can also convert them in 3D structures uh, to create the number of using subs useful subsets for drug design, drug-like, lead-like, and so on. The zinc data is curated by the University of San Francisco and is widely used for molecular docking, virtual screening, 
and uh, so far it includes uh, approximately uh, 15 to 20 million of uh, different drug-like molecules. Some of, of this month, uh, up to 35 million purchasable compounds are ready to dock in 3D formats. So it's uh, close to 40, 40 million uh, drug-like molecules. So those of you who is interested in the, in the virtual screen, you could also use the zinc, uh, the zinc database to uh, to screen all these molecules. And uh, one could purchase the, the molecule of, of interest, like that, the molecule of the year. The, the zinc database is also integrated in a, uh, the Python protocols. <coughs> it's also possible to obtain it via some Python scripts, analyze the, the script, screen them, and you could uh, access the database by providing smiles, and catalog, vendor code, drug name, zinc ID, so different IDs to 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 access the the right molecules. And the chemical structure structures are special. Therefore, it is important to uh, discriminate between chemical database software and the, the other database programs using the, uh, the text and images is the, where the chemical database must be able to interpret chemical structures. So again, the, the, this, the chemical structure structures uh, at some point are unique and uh, in a way that if the, the, there are some the, there are some the formats which are using uh, different representations of the molecules they could interfere with the, uh, with this this parameter and would also interfere with the uh, analysis and the, the design and uh, the processing of the database and uh, would probably interfere with the quantitative structure activity relationship. On the other hand, in a chemical database, it is desirable to, to be able to search for the individual exact compounds and the compounds containing the particular substructure and uh, compounds that similar to the to the given structure so uh, if you have the the exact individual compounds it's always like well this is what you are looking for uh, sometimes to to um, upscale your your substance to either using uh, different computational techniques like uh, scaffold hopping or uh, substructure search, different substructure search. At this point, uh, you could uh, you could also integrate different uh, chemoinformatics algorithms. In order to, to to screen different substructures more efficiently, so this is uh, 